and gauge quantum drive. Katie has trivia. Oh, I have so many thoughts about this episode, but I'm going to refrain and just tell you about fun facts first. <laughs> <laughs> so the first and most obvious fun fact is that the title is, we think, a reference to the 1859 novel, A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Because mm -hmm. it's a tale of two topas. And that story, I watched, did you watch Wishbone growing up? I did not. Okay, Wishbone was my jam. It was on PBS. It's about a little dog who is very well read. The stories of his IRL life and then the fantasy. They would go through a book. So every time I think of A Tale of Two Cities, I picture the Wishbone version okay. of that. So... Like a picture of Jack Russell Terrier <laughs> playing out the parts of uh, A Tale of Two Cities. And you got it. You pretty much got it. <laughs> so, okay. So that's a fun fact about me. And that's a fun fact about the title. <laughs> In this episode, Bordis sings two songs at a very epic concert that was put mm -hmm. on. The first one is called Nature Boy. And that song was originally recorded by American jazz singer Nat King Cole, and it was released on March 29th, 1948. Wow. Yeah. The second song is You'll Never Walk Alone, and it, that is a show tune from 1945 from, oh God, from Rogers and Hammerstein's. I can never say their name. There was a musical they did called Carousel. Mm -hmm. I've never, I've never heard of Carousel till today <laughs> i'm not familiar with the musical but i'm familiar with this particular song not so much the first one but this one for sure i went on youtube i watched the scene what the this song is from because they made a movie version of this okay and what was going down in that scene was very serious seeming without any other context of what was oh. going on but i just thought it would be interesting to bring up like where those two songs came from that bordis sang yeah. also there is a revisit to the court scene where they were deciding Topa's fate from about a boy. And we had theories about like, oh, it seems like they maybe re-recorded some of this or they had, you know, some new shots integrated so that Topa could move around the set. And Tom Constantino confirmed that. And on his Twitter said, we had to go back into dailies to see what was available to use from the Brandon Braga directed episode including never before seen angles angles to build an animatic after we planned out the storyboard slash animatic above we had to construct part of the set to get new angles so that topa could interact with the scene and havina which i think is so neat yeah when you think about it we also brought back some of the original actors and of course the amazing rena owen to recreate new shots some of the cast dressed in season one uniforms for background plates as well Howard Berger and team helped to make sure continuity was kept. So I think yeah. that's very impressive. And Rob put on Twitter, so go to Quantum Drive Pod and follow us. Rob did a side by side of the original scene and this scene. It's pretty impressive to see them together. Yeah, the the pacing of the speech from the original and this one match up exactly. And Tom alluded to the fact that he was very meticulous about making sure that the edits hit that pacing so that it would line up perfectly. It's it's such an incredibly well done sequence. I love continuity and I literally just thought they maybe inserted the act the actress playing Topa into the scene and mm. then as I was watching I'm like no this is like stuff we haven't seen before. So it was just very impressive. Yeah. That whole thing cuz about a boy is such a memorable episode to me. About a girl. Oh, about a girl. About a Boy is a movie with yes. Hugh Grant. Um, <laughs> About a Girl is a very memorable episode. And so seeing this together, it, did, it didn't seem like it was a new scene. Mm. That's how close to the original they kept yeah, everything. Yeah, I mean, we've seen shows revisit their past episodes before, and it's generally kind of obvious as yeah. to what is old and what is new. And the magic trick they pull off here makes it so incredibly seamless all right on to guest stars rena owen who we just talked about made a special guest appearance uh featured in the simulation so topa could first see the trial that took place yeah rena plays avina very memorable character from 
about a girl and uh, the season two episode Sanctuary. So yep. I was very excited to see Rena Owen back because I love Havina. Same. I want Aside more. from Talaya, who I was like most excited to see come back, mm -hmm. Havina was number two on my list. So yeah. even though we didn't really get new Havina story, I do. I want to see her back still and see like where her story's gone. But yeah. happy to see her again, regardless. Yeah, I since I do the fun facts, I watched to see who the guest stars are in the beginning, mm. and I saw Rena Owen. I was like, yes! And so I was very, <laughs> very stoked for that. Andy Milder is in this episode, who I'm pretty sure this is me speculating. Rob and I both compared the voice of this actor. <laughs> We're pretty sure that uh, he is playing the naked. Balkarian alien in Ensign Bulabar. And he's been in a ton of stuff. Like this yeah. actor has been in a lot of things. He has starred in Weeds as Dean Hodes, Parks and Rex as Freddy. He had a guest role on Star Trek Deep Space Nine and in Voyager. Nice. And he's appeared in movies like Apollo 13, Armageddon, and Transformers. He's done a ton of voice work. So you've probably seen him somewhere. But again, we're speculating that he's the naked alien. I'm pretty sure he is. But correct us if correct me if I'm wrong on that yeah, one. For anybody wondering, uh, Katie and I go back and forth a lot on like trying to figure out who's playing who. And mm -hmm. we often record these episodes before a lot of these guest stars are confirmed. So we are making like our best educational guesses in a lot of situations. Yeah, I feel like I'm 99% on everything else. Just this one. I mean, he could be playing somebody else, but. Pretty sure. Underneath that special effects makeup, which is so good, sometimes yeah. it's hard to tell who the actor is. Very true. Andy Chapman is in this episode who plays Admiral Howland, and she's a f familiar face to me. So if you've seen her before, it may have been in a multitude of things. So she's been Deidre in the show 911 and Dolores Maloney on General Hospital. But her internet movie database and just her credits go on forever. So she's also been in Beverly Hills, 90210, ER, NYPD Blue, The X-Files, The Shield, Dexter, 24, Glee, NCIS, Shameless, How to Get Away with Murder, plus many more. So wow. you've probably seen Andy Chapman somewhere before. And this was a fun fact about her, that she was the first black actress to voice Storm in an X-Men feature. Oh, really? It was called Pride of the X-Men from 1989. Yes, I mm -hmm. know that one very well. And that's one where Wolverine weirdly has an Australian accent for some reason. But yeah, that's that's a great animated movie. Yeah. So I thought that was worth including because I loved this character. Yeah, she was great. Yeah. So she was she was awesome. Jim Mahoney is in this episode who plays the character Brosk. He's the bubbly teal headed alien. Mm hmm. Uh, he's also the actor who plays him is a writer and has been credited with helping write the movie Klaus on Netflix. Oh, OK, cool. Yeah. The yeah. Jason Schwartzman, J.K. Simmons movie, which is very heartfelt and may yeah. or may not have made me cry. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> he, he was involved with that. But this is a fun fact about Brosk. He is only one of two alien crew members, the other being Unk, who speaks his own language rather than going through the translator. That's true. I never really considered that. But yeah. yeah. So I thought two for one there. Yeah. And last but not least, uh, Imani Pullum, who plays Topa, got their first major acting role in the Disney Broadway touring production of The Lion King. And uh, she portrayed young Nala. Oh, wow. Okay. Which I think is super interesting. I love The Lion King. And I got to see the Broadway show a few years ago. It's it's honestly incredible what they do for that. Just the the animals that they, I don't know how to explain it. They have like, it's not <laughs> animatronic, but they have yeah. like these really elaborate sets and animals. And I'm doing air quotes. I know if you're listening to the podcast, you can't see, but like, <laughs> like giant giraffes and things. It's just a really neat thing that she also was involved with that. Cool. And she was also featured on the reboot of Nickelodeon's All That. Yes, yeah, she had a fairly short IMDb list, but yeah, she's young, so that's to be expected. But I'm just very excited about Topa and Topa's journey, and uh, I love I love the actress who played Topa. So yeah, those are all the fun facts and guest stars from this episode. All right. Then. Hey, thank you so much for watching. This is just a segment of the full podcast that Rob and I do. 
So if you want to hear more of our thoughts and full episode discussions, go to thegeekgeneration.com slash quantum drive. <laughs>